Hi everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel where I'm video documenting my first experience of doing a no buy year in 2021. I make videos about my no buy year itself but also about project panning, a cooking challenge that I've set for myself and some ideas for upcycling and recycling. So if any of that sounds interesting to you then I'd love it for you to subscribe to my channel. For today's video, I'm just filming my makeup and skincare empties for the past month, so the month of May. And I actually had my best month so far, just in terms of the sort of dollar amount of products that I finished up in this past month, which is pretty exciting. And I will let you know how much that was at the end of the video though. And I'll also update you on how I'm going just in terms of the year so far for my reverse rouge challenge. So for anyone that doesn't know, reverse rouge is based on achieving rouge status, which is kind of like what you get at Sephora if you spend over a thousand dollars throughout the year except in reverse so instead of spending a thousand dollars you use up a thousand dollars worth of products and Christina Chang who I'll link her channel below she created her own version of this called the ultimate reverse rouge which is where you actually use up two thousand dollars worth of products and you're only allowed to spend $1,000. So basically, I guess the amount that you use up has to be double what you're spending. And I kind of adapted her idea for myself, just mainly sort of based around this, the Australian context, which is that obviously our dollar value is a little bit different to the US dollar but also makeup and skincare in Australia just from what I've seen about people talking about prices of things and things like that um, in the States it seems to be that here it's a lot more expensive even if you convert you know directly the US dollar into an Australian dollar value products here are still more expensive um, so yeah I just sort of adapted it and I thought that because in Australia to achieve the highest sort of level or status or whatever you want to call it and Sephora you have to spend $1,500 or $1,500 I decided that I would use that as what I'm aiming for and I want instead of saying that I can only spend 50% of that amount I actually want to have my empties the value of empties minus the value of what I purchased reach to $1,500 so for as an example if I spend $300 during the course of this year on makeup and skincare I have to use up at least $1,800 worth, so $1,500 plus $300. I hope that makes sense. Um, but yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to ask me. But I will just jump into the products that I used up, and I might start out with fragrance just because I only had one of those. And some of these, if you've seen my Project Pan uh, update that I uploaded a couple of days ago, you would know what some of these are. And also I think one of the empties I have was also in the Partners in Cream update that I uploaded about halfway through the month, but that's okay. I'll try and remember to mention if a product was in a particular project. And this fragrance was. So this fragrance um, was Rock Princess from Vera Wang. And this was in my, just my sort of general um, project pan, my year long rolling project pan. Um, this one, and I will mention for each of the products, whether I, briefly, whether I liked it or didn't like it, and if I would or wouldn't repurchase it. Um, if I say I would repurchase it, it's obviously outside the sort of world of me being on a no buy this year so because I'm on a no buy it's a replacement only no buy so even if I say I would repurchase something I would have to have run out of any product that could serve that purpose before I could repurchase it so if I said I would repurchase this perfume it would have to mean that I've used up every other um, fragrance that I have before I would repurchase it um, just to clarify um, so yeah, this one Vera Wang Rock Princess. I wasn't the greatest fan of this 
uh, wouldn't repurchase it anyway because it's not cruelty free and I'm transitioning all of my fragrance makeup and skincare to cruelty free uh, so I'm no longer purchasing from companies that are not cruelty free but I just wasn't the greatest fan of this fragrance either it was just a little bit too sweet for my tastes um, so that was my fragrance that I finished up in the past month and so I might do makeup now I think I had one full-size product and then the rest were just samples um, so the full size that I had was the MAC Fix Plus setting spray, uh, the rose scented one. This was in my Partners in Cream project pan. Uh, that one I did like it but uh, unfortunately MAC is not cruelty free so that would be a won't repurchase uh, for that one. And then the rest of the makeup ones I had were samples. Two of them were kind of deluxe size samples and the others were just uh, really tiny ones. So I'll do the deluxe ones. I'll go from biggest to smallest. Um, so I had two sort of deluxe size samples from Tarte and one was their Stay Spray Setting Spray. This is the second of three of these that I have. And so the third one, I'm about halfway through it now. This one, I didn't mind it sort of for setting my face, but I don't think I would actually buy this once I've finished the samples, just because I do find that sometimes it seems to irritate. So sometimes the skin around my eyes just gets a little bit, it's just sort of the skin on the corner of my eyes here for some reason gets a bit dry. And when that happened, I found that this irritated my skin a little bit. And I also couldn't use it to wet a brush for eyeshadow. I found that if I did that, it really did irritate my eyelids quite badly. I'm not too sure if maybe this has a higher alcohol content than the Fix Plus, if that's the reason. But yeah, so I think for that reason, I probably wouldn't. I am going to repurpose. I find this little bottle though is a good size. I'm just going to use it to fill with um, a setting spray. If I find a setting spray that sort of doesn't, I can use for wetting a brush for my eyelids, I will pour a little bit of it into there because I find this is a good um, size bottle to have, like just with my eyeshadow brushes. Um, so yeah, that will be, I will repurpose the packaging on that one for that. And then the second one I had from Tarte was an empty of their base tape uh, hydrating primer. And this again was also the second of three and I'm sort of, yeah, probably about halfway through the third one at the moment. This one is also kind of a not, wouldn't purchase um, this one. I think just, I really found the smell. It has a really, really strong coconut scent and I did find that to be a little bit overpowering. I'm not a huge fan of coconut scented things, but I'm not, I don't hate it either, but I just found the scent of this was a little bit too strong. Um, and I think overall I tend to prefer sort of more smoothing primers rather than hydrating primers as well. And then the next two samples I have are just really small ones uh, from Becca. So the first one is a sample of three different shades of their Hydra Light uh, Plumping Lip Balm. I did quite like this, uh, especially the third shade called Tide, which was sort of like a fairly sort of nude colored shade. Uh, but the reason I decided to use these up is just because Beck is closing and by the time they close, I will still be on my no buy. So I just figured there's no point in keeping the samples around. They're kind of just creating clutter because yeah, there's no, even if I like the products, I wouldn't be able to purchase them and it's actually kind of weird as well I got these samples from Sephora and um, Becca in Australia is stocked at Sephora I'm pretty sure that's the only place in Australia that you can buy it except I guess direct from the website but weirdly even though it originally was an Australian company if you purchase directly from the website it, it comes from the states it gets shipped from the states and you have to pay like international shipping which is quite expensive and Sephora in Australia doesn't actually carry all of um, Becca's products. They have just more of like a limited range of, of their products, I guess probably their most popular ones. And so this lip balm, as far as I know, was never actually available at Sephora in Australia or at least not in the past 
18 months or so because when I got this sample from Sephora, I looked on Becca's website and this actually wasn't available because I thought, oh, well, you know, I got this sample, just see how much, how much would it cost um, if I did like it, how much would it cost? And yeah, I couldn't find it on the Sephora website um, for Australia. So I find it weird that they would send you a product, a sample of a product that you can't, can't actually buy. But anyway, um, and then the other one I had was just a sample of their uh, first light priming filter and then three shades of their ultimate coverage 24 hour foundation i just used the alabaster which was a tiny bit light so i mixed in a little bit of the shade cashew to sort of darken it a little bit um, i wasn't a big fan of this foundation i found it looked a little bit cakey on me and i did try and use the darker shade buff um, as a like a cream uh, bronzer but that was a bit of a fail it looked yeah it looked awful but I think that was more down to me than the the product I think I yeah just didn't do a very good job of it so yeah they're gone uh, D I guess no more clutter uh, from having samples of something that yeah I'm never gonna get so um, that's good so that was all of the makeup that I used up so I will just go through the skincare that I have and I have one two three four five six skincare items three of them are full size and three of them are samples and so the first one was this hand cream it was a lavender scented hand cream and I think my sister got this for me when she was in Thailand because all of the um apart from the name of the the company and lavender nourishing hand cream and the company is called puta one um everything else is in thai so um yeah i did like this hand cream it smelled really nice i i like anything lavender scented to be honest um and it was yeah it, felt, it was a good texture i don't like hand creams that are really really thick um, I prefer them to be a little bit more sort of like have a th sort of a thinner consistency. So yeah, I really did like this hand cream and it is cruelty free according to the label. Uh, but yeah, I can't buy this again, I guess, unless I go to Thailand, which I have no plans to do so in the near future, partially just because our border is going to be closed at least until the middle of next year. But um, also, yeah, not planning a holiday to Thailand at this stage. Um, so the next product I had was a moisturizer and this was from uh, Philosophy and it's called their Take a Deep Breath Oxygenating Gel Cream, I believe is what it's called. Oil-free oxygenating gel cream. I hope that is focusing. I'm not too sure. Yeah, I think that's focused there. Um, so this was the second moisturizer that I had from Philosophy. The one I tried previously was their Renewed Hope. I think it's called Renewed Hope in a Jar. What a ridiculous name. But anyway, Renewed Hope in a Jar Water Cream or something like that. That one I really didn't like. I found that it actually made my skin feel really greasy. Um, this one I liked a lot better. But philosophy is not cruelty free so I won't be repurchasing that if philosophy was cruelty free this would be probably something that I would consider repurchasing it wasn't amazing um, but I did yeah I did like it and yeah it was definitely worked a lot better for me than than the other um, moisturizer that I tried from philosophy that one I finished I think in sort of the first month or so of the year uh, and then so the last full size skincare I have, hopefully I don't make a huge mess when I do this because it's another tube that I've cut open, was the salicylic acid mask uh, from The Ordinary. And this one was also in my project pan. Um, this one, I just think that I am to forget like I use mask type products I think I just use them too intermittently to reap any sort of uh, real benefit out of them so I think for me it's probably just a bit of a waste of money and yeah then they're just sort of clutter in the bathroom like the I'm pretty sure the only reason I finished this was because I put it into my project pan so I do have a few other of these sort of similar type products just like clay masks and things like that um, that I think maybe in the future I might also put them into a project pan just to sort of finish them off because yeah I just feel like I don't know if it's because I'm forgetful or lazy or whatever it is or just don't have time in the evenings or something 
but yeah I just feel like I if you're only using them once a month or something like that I think there's probably um, yeah they're just not really gonna give you any kind of benefit so um, yeah I uh, wouldn't repurchase for that reason um, then the next three products I have are all skincare samples and I think all of these are from Mecca which is yeah I think I say this in almost every single video it's similar to Sephora in Australia it's like a cosmetics department store um, that sells sort of like a lot of high-end brands I guess and they also do have um, some of their own brand of stuff so the first sample I have is the watermelon toner from uh, glow recipe um, this one was okay but I just feel like um, it's so overpriced um, for a toner I can't remember exactly how much it is in Australia I'll probably just put the prices up on the the screen I'll look it up later but I'm pretty sure it was over $50 so that's just yeah um, too much money for me to justify spending on a toner so wouldn't repurchase although yeah it wasn't bad but I just feel like there's no there's no way that it could be worth that much uh, money and then the next one I have is a sample of a moisturizer it was the dr. Dennis gross stress repair face cream um, sometimes I feel like I need a stress repair life cream but anyway that is I've cut that one open as well um, that's that one there sorry I tipped it the wrong way um, this one I did quite like it and I was actually surprised when I f um, found that this company is cruelty free I don't know why I think sometimes I just assume all those really high-end sort of skincare brands are not cruelty free um, but they are but this is just yeah something that um, again just way too expensive I think this one a full size of this moisturizer was like hundred and twenty dollars or something like that and yeah um, no way I could justify spending that much money and then the last one I actually don't even really know what this product was but I just kind of used it as a toner but it's the Amor or Amore Pacific I'm not too sure vintage single extract essence <laughs> when I read that I was like what <laughs> what is it extract essence because to me they're the same thing and and what is it an essence of vintage single extract essence that's all it says so anyway this is the bottle so if anyone knows what this product is supposed to do uh, please let me know I just used it as a toner um, and I don't know it just didn't really do anything for me and it smelled weird as well <laughs> and I think I also when I looked up how much this cost I um, yeah did a fair bit of eye rolling as well I think it was also well over a hundred dollars um, so yeah those are all of my makeup and skincare and one fragrance empties for the month so I've just got written down here what the value of everything was so the total value of all of those empties was two hundred and fifty seven dollars and eighty two cents Australian um, the total value of things that I purchased for makeup and skincare for this month was eight dollars and thirty nine cents I just bought a uh, setting spray um, just because I knew that I was going to run out of the the Tarte one so um, I guess I kind of broke my no buy because I haven't quite finished it yet but it's just got a couple of days left and I happen to be at um, the pharmacy so I bought a setting spray and the one that I bought is one from Flower Beauty which is a cruelty free um, so for this month my empties minus purchases is $249.43 and then my year to date totals for everything for empties comes to $817.18 and purchases for the year is $112.54 and I will actually say as well the Flower Beauty the setting spray that's actually the first makeup purchase that I've made for this entire year everything else was uh, skincare and the bulk of that has just been my uh, cleanser 
um, that I usually go through probably like one per month um, and the cleansing oil that I use to remove makeup those have been the I think they have been the only things that I've purchased in terms of skincare oh and some uh, niacinamide serum but anyway so purchases is $112.54 and then so my empties minus purchases is $704.64 so given that we're almost halfway through the year to get to $1,500 by the end of the year I would need to be at $750 by the end of June and I'm already at $704. So I'm pretty sure that I can use up $50 worth of makeup and skincare this month. And I'm just thinking, because I just got a new cleanser the other day, because spoiler alert, I've already run out of my cleanser like on the 3rd of June. Um, but that will be an empty for June, not for, for May, even though I've already run it. I'm filming this video on the 4th of June, but anyway, um, so yeah, I actually can't foresee myself purchasing anything else in the month of June. Um, obviously you have to see how I go, but I don't think there'll be anything else that I need to replace. So yeah, I'm pretty sure that I will be sort of on track at the halfway point to get to $1,500 by the end of the year, which will be good. It means I can hit my goal. But yeah, that's basically it for today's video. If you like this kind of content, uh, project panning, that kind of stuff as well, then make sure you subscribe to my channel. I will have my Partners in Cream will be the next project pan video that I have coming uh, towards the sort of middle of the month and then deck of panning will be after that. So yeah, if you would like to watch either of those, then make sure you subscribe to my channel. If you did like this video, feel free to give me a thumbs up. And if you've also used any of the products that I mentioned in today's video, then feel free to let me know what you thought of them in the comments below. But that's all I have for today's video. Thank you so much for watching and hopefully I'll catch you in my next one. Bye. Bye.